morning, everyone. Thank you very much for the very kind and interesting introduction. Uh, so over the past few days, I think we all see uh, a lot of stories about uh, AI around the industry. In fact, uh, the opening uh, video that I saw, you can stick the word AI almost into every frame. Right? So I want to say a few more words about AI in the context of uh, industrial production. And I hope I can make the case that there is a gap between the current AI research and what is needed in the industrial deployments. And I hope I can point to some directions on how to close this gap. So as we all know, these days, you know, AI you know, has been really making amazing progress. Right? We saw AI already beating human beings in complex games. And also, AI can do science. They can help scientists to discover protein structures for drug design. They can also do many amazing things, including generating contents, text, and image for entertainment and for many other purposes. With the emergence of uh, mega-scale big language models, uh, image models based on deep learning and the neural networks, uh, people are already seeing the glimpse of uh, artificial general intelligence or maybe AI consciousness you know, in the horizon. In fact, there are big claims already made by companies about the arrival of uh, this uh, very exciting moment. Uh, actually, you know, uh, in one of the you know, booths you know, in the show, you will see Mohammed bin Zayed University of AI and also the company Patron is showcasing such an uh, interface of using larger models to produce very, very intriguing contents. And we are bringing really these large models to everybody's hand, that you can play with it already. So are we already solving the AI industrial gap? That's the problem I want to ask. Well, if you survey CEOs and the CTOs from uh, major companies, uh, you probably will find uh, slightly a different picture. In fact, more than you know, 70 per, uh, 60% of the CTOs and the CEOs, according to a survey, are not very happy with the level of uh, AI accomplishments and the deployments and, uh, and uh, uh, maybe uh, monetization with their corporates. There are many reasons ranging from uh, AI solutions being too expensive, AI people and engineers be too hard to train or find, and uh, other things. Or maybe they even don't know where to buy an AI solution or train or find those people who can build those things. In particular, in specific areas, the very practice and the concept of uh, AI safety, for example, is uh, lagging far behind what the industry is looking for, such as the industry like aviation, autonomous driving, or maybe nuclear power plant operation and so forth. Right? And also, many of the uh, celebrated AI solutions, such as the big language models we are all talking about, is actually not environmentally sustainable. To train a model just for a single round, you need to really consume the energy consumption of a uh, sizable city. And you cannot do that every day for every individual. Right? So that's another open problem. And also, in current AI environment, where people are working on and the uh, solutions are being made, the data are very siloed. And also, the algorithms and the solutions are very best bulk. So therefore, it is uh, not helping democratizing and uh, decentralizing the AI solutions. I don't want to even mention more about uh, the actual very availability of uh, AI tool sets and boxes. Nowadays, they are so proliferous, but also confusing, to the point that if you want to build a product in your company, say, speech conversational system, you need to navigate a maze of uh, very, very uh, heterogeneous resources and uh, providers to come up with uh, one crafty solution. And then if your supply chain or if your uh, clients are asking for something more, uh, say, uh, image-related uh, solutions, you have to do this all over again and again and again. Right? So this is obviously not what an industrial product, a mature one, look like. I think uh, you know, to really meet the requirement and expectation of a truly industrial, economical, and sustainable solutions from AI, you need to make the product more safe, more eco-friendly, more accessible, and also more affordable. Right. And that actually raised a lot of uh, 
not just the engineering challenge, but also scientific and research challenge. Also, don't forget that there is always a risk and also a downside associated with every AI solution that we must be conscious about. For example, if you train your AI models with uh, uh, a low quality data or maybe the wrong data, you actually can turn your solution to be biased toward certain directions. And also, you know, AI you know, solutions and the products could be abused or even weaponized to do something you know, uh, harmful for people. For example, they can get people addicted, they can get people manipulated, and also their proliferation can empower the wrong people, right? And also many AI solutions are very vulnerable you know, to adversarial attacks you know, from uh, you know, opponents and uh, to the point that uh, they really could uh, you know, uh, deliver unexpected and harmful results. And also AI answers and the products very often time are producing results that are unexplainable, which prevents wide you know, uh, adoption and the confidence on them. So to address this problem, I believe that there needs to be a further revolution in AI, which helped to move the very research and production of uh, AI solutions out of where they are, as if in a black box, and then turn them more close to a, you know, uh, a practice that we already you know, uh, you know, adopt you know, in many industrial productions for centuries. There is a need from the community and also from researchers, engineers, to really start defining standardized building blocks like Legos. And not only that, to also standardize the architecture and also the workflow of production so that knowledge can be transferred you know, uh, you know, uh, into different producers to lower the cost and also to offer opportunities for more, more widespread and universal safety check. There is also a need to make the solution and the production of AI more composable and more importantly certifiable so that you know, government entities and uh, regulators can have a, 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 you know, a hook to uh, a apply appropriate regulations and the support to make sure that you know, uh, safety and uh, stability and robustness you know, can be mandated to the release of every AI solution. And last but not least, you want to make sure that whatever AI solution and uh, you know, machinery produce is predictable and also repeatable and uh, explainable so that you generate confidence and loyalty from the clients. Indeed, I think there is uh, a trend needed to push AI closer to what has been done in civil engineering, where you really want to make it more open and more agnostic to different uh, industrial sectors so that your toolboxes, you know, just like a train rail, you know, can carry all different cargoes and different carts, right? You know, based on a standardized agreement. So in here, I see the opportunity and also the needs to develop the next generation operating system, this time not for database, not for standard computing, but for artificial intelligence to allow many of the building blocks of AI solutions to be pre-made and then with additional knowledge-driven add-ons to customize them, to specialize them into solutions. In that way, we can make the production of AI from a very painful engineering crafty practice into a more comfortable no-tier experience. And uh, there are companies there already you know, venturing into this uh, uh, direction, and I urge you know, uh, you know, more to join this foray. Now, going back to uh, the topic that the speaker, the opener of the event just mentioned, how that back impacts academia. Well, I think there is more to offer from academia to uh, propel this uh, movement. Because uh, right now, the current practice based on large models, based on BESPOC and the black box practice, based on deep learning, is simply inadequate to answer many of the practical needs from AI solutions. For example, AI solutions are not living in vacuum. You know, they are actually you know, existing and operating in a real environment, which has uh, a lot of uh, surprises and uh, noises. I guess everybody probably this morning or the other days you know, are experiencing these terrible traffic jams out of the conference center, right? So why that happens? 
Well, you can blame AI because an AI recommendation system will do their best job to send people to the best route. And when everyone is going to the best route, the best route becomes the worst route. Right? So there is always a need to take in you know, the interplay between multiple solutions of AI and also between multiple consumers of AI to create you know, a more collaborative and also intimate environment for the AI solutions to be studied and employed. And that's where I see the need of uh, really moving AI toward a multidisciplinary multi science with the foundation built on statistics, computer science, and also economics. And here are some of the most important and pressing problems that need to be seen and uh, investigated, but still uh, not actually at the center stage of AI research. For example, I talked about already the needs of building operating systems and compilers universally for different types of AI solutions, right? And also there is uh, obviously a need to study collaborative learning rather than just uh, you know, siloed you know, uh, you know, uh, data-driven learning that is uh, preventing you know, uh, the AI agents to be receptive of uh, environmental signals. There is also a huge need of uh, quantifying the uncertainty of uh, AI results so that clients and the users can be given options of uh, making choices among multiple possible solutions based on the confidence level. There is also a need to design or to inject strategic thinking and game theoretic kind of uh, uh, met methodology into the design of uh, AI solution because you want to incentivize the user to provide you truthful and reliable data because they have every reason to lie about their facts to gain advantage you know, based on the current AI solutions. And that also leads to the very study of uh, you know, contract series, auction series, and the market design to really see you know, a populational version of uh, AI practice and the AI consumption, which allows you know, that dynamics to be theoretically captured and modeled to improve the design of the inner uh, mechanism of AI solutions. And last but not least, mechanical design is covering everything I said before to put everything into a holistic ground so that you can have a globally optimal solution, not only for every individual, but for society as a whole. So to conclude what I just talked about, these type of topics are now being paid attention in certain universities. And the MBZUI, the university I have the privilege to lead in here in Abu Dhabi, is one of such schools where we are really striving into unlocking the potential of AI by opening new areas and by steering our attention into new opportunities and new problems. As of now, just in two and a half years of its birth, we are already entering the top 30 great universities in AI worldwide, and we are still not satisfied with our progress. We want to move even higher, and uh, we want to work with friends and uh, potential partners and collaborators, such as in this audience, to jointly study the future opportunities and the challenge of AI solutions. Thank you very much.